Hey everybody, welcome to Ravenstead. Today I'm going to be working on a piece of war game terrain down here in the dungeon. I've got a piece of XPS foam cut out at four by five and a half inches. This will be uh, part of the base of the build. And then I've got some smaller pieces of the XPS foam cut out to do all the detail work. So let's see what we can come up with. You guys are welcome to watch over my shoulder. Let's get something built. All right, let's get into this build. I'm just gonna make a couple of quick cuts across this base piece that I selected. Don't worry, throughout this video I do use the craft knife quite a bit, but I don't cut myself. So relax and just enjoy it. I'm gonna try and get a little bit of an organic shape to this piece. So just hacking away parts, cutting in some design. Once I get both pieces done, then I'm gonna take a little bit of aluminum foil roll in some texture and then a wire brush to kind of cut in some striations give the surface of the base kind of a stone look sedimentary rock look you can use a brass brush like this or you could use a uh, stiffer steel brush for a little bit more coarse texture next step is kind of figuring out some more interest I'm gonna go with some different levels situate these blocks on here and then I'll carve those down I've got a little piece there kind of a Mesa look to it a little bit of hot glue I'll stick this right on I want to have a couple different levels for miniatures you can see I got a miniature sitting on the other one for scale I've built a lot of pieces like this but most of them had like a stone tower or something on there so I want to do something that would span a gap so a bridge these are going to be the bridge pillars figure out where I want those one of the things that I wanted to do with this build is make sure that the gap that I was spanning could be adjusted so it's going to be a broken or ruined bridge having that gap there should add some interest to the game table here I'm just cutting in the stone pillars that'll be the base support of the bridge. Just going to outline that and then go in with a uh, exacto knife and just cut that out. And I'll set these two pillars in with hot glue. There we go. A little deeper. Nice snug fit. Make sure it looks more or less like it's been carved into the stone below. And we'll do that to the other piece as well. Get those two lined up nicely. I wanted also the base of the pieces to match up on a one inch play grid. So when I was lining up the bridge sections of each base, I wanted to make sure that uh, you know that was all lined up in a regular distance. It just makes it easier to count out space and distance when you're playing a tabletop game. So the two pillars are set and everything is nice and level. And now we're gonna get to work on some flagstones. That'll give us a little step up onto those rock plateaus. I just kind of imagine this being uh, flagstones that somebody stacked in. Just gonna hot glue those together. Do a little bit of carving. Give them some interest. And then I'll mark out and mortise those in just like I did with the stone pillars. So I've got the depth marked out. And cut out that mortise. And then these will get hot glued in. I like using hot glue, I use um, PVA glue some but uh, I like to kind of move pretty quickly when I'm building, so hot glue is pretty nice. You just have all those little strings you gotta get off of there. Get back up there. The mini fits on there, moves right up towards the bridge. I'm uh, texturing some planks here. These are just thin pieces of XPS foam that I'm gonna use to make the, the boards leading up to the bridge. You could use actual wood, um, you know, cut out strips on a bandsaw, or you could use coffee stirrers. You know, we've all seen this kind of stuff before. I'm not doing anything new here. Just 
making the ends a little ragged. Some of the planks though, I will leave uh, nice even cuts on the ends too, because not everything has to be broken, busted up. It is a ruined bridge though. So there, a couple of planks. Once that uh, gets painted and textured, the mini should stick on that bridge, no problem. Just glue those down real quick with some hot glue. And we've got to do some uh, timber framing. Socket in a couple of uh, big timbers, some cross braces. And I just cut a little tiny mortise in the foam there. Stick those in. And then some, uh, some long timbers, the bridge supports. ahead and put down some planking as well. All this is with the XPS foam. I didn't use any actual wood for this. Uh, sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. I like working with the foam though. It's pretty versatile. Get those planks all put down. How about one little broken one there on the end? Nice. There's the two bridge halves coming together. So you can slide the gap open or closed, depending on how difficult we want to make it to get from one side to the other. Now put a little bit of debris along the sides. A couple of planks off to the side, like somebody was maybe trying to fix the bridge and just gave up. Maybe some little goblin kids were over there trying to make a fort or something. I'm just going to put a couple of drywall screws in there. They really don't serve any structural purpose, but it does give the piece a little bit of weight so they don't get knocked around the table as much. The bottoms will eventually, I'll, I'll, I'll paint those, but uh, I'll zip a couple more screws in there. It's pretty satisfying. There it goes. There we go. You can tell the difference, like when you set them down, they, they kind of plunk onto the table. Now it's time for the fun. I'm going to coat this down with a mixture of Mod Podge and black paint. And that'll seal up that XPS foam. Makes it a little more durable. And if you've got any uh, fuzzy parts on there or anything that's loose, this will kind of glue it, lock it down. And it makes a nice dark base coat. It is glossy and it dries fairly glossy. And then we'll go over it with some uh, latex paints. So now we're at the stage where uh, things are really starting to shine. Gotta paint out the stone columns. This is uh, just a craft paint. That's mostly what I use. And uh, the color is pewter. No, dolphin gray. That's right. This one is dolphin gray. And I'll do some slate gray on the stone after this dries. And then we, uh, we'll paint up the wood as well. There's the graphite gray. Cut in around all these details. I try to remember when I'm building something how easy or difficult it is to paint. And I always seem to forget. I really get lost in the details. So I just uh, I just deal with it later. Cutting in. A little shaky Pete there. Jeez, too much coffee. All right, detailing out the timbers now. Don't worry, we're not going to leave it just this brown color. Uh, we'll go in with some highlights and do some dry brushing here in a minute. Get all the planks painted up with this base brown color. This is uh, Coffee Bean is the name of the color. get in between those gaps. You don't want any of that pink foam showing through, that's for sure. The nice thing about the Mod Podge and black paint is that it gives you a good base, uh, a lot of shadow to it for all your other colors. All right, 
Now we get to do some dry brushing. Hit the stone first. That really picks out the details. And I like to go pretty extreme when I dry brush. Uh, I'll use fairly bright contrasts against the uh, against the undercoat because I'm gonna go over the whole piece with uh, black wash just an acrylic ink and water wash over everything and that'll really pick out the details it kind of flows into the cracks we'll get to that in a minute now here I'm using some uh, dolphin gray over top of the graphite gray uh, it looks kind of weird uh, it looks like it's gonna be way too bright but it dulls down even in even in the drying process these latex paints will will dull down some I'll highlight this wood that's one thing about wood when you like just walking around town or something like that or going out in the woods or the park look at trees and you won't really see all that much brown you'll see more tans and grays uh, especially with this old wood like if this was old uh, weathered oak maybe the bridge was tarred at one point so it's nice and dark and then as it aged it got kind of gray so like I say I go with these pretty bright extremes when I'm picking out all the details now it's my favorite part I love putting on those black wash look how that just flows through so that really highlights all the depth and gives everything the grungy look so this will get washed the whole thing yeah, all the surfaces will get a coat of this this is the black wash A lot of recipes for this out there you can also buy commercial washes work pretty well I like mine really really thin um, I'd rather make two or three coats of washes to get the effect that I want than paint one on and regret it I like to sneak up on it yeah, some green now it looks super bright right but it doesn't have it doesn't have hardly any pigment in it so as soon as it uh, starts to dry, it almost completely disappears. So the same principles as using uh, washes in like portrait painting, oil washes. You just get that layered effect. I kind of envisioned this being a bridge over a river valley. Uh, so I figured the Stones would be kind of mossy, moldy. Everything's kind of wet. Just picking out some detail with a little bit of flocking. I'll just use a gray, gray paint and then sprinkle some on there. Put some uh, heavier pieces of flocking in here, like little shrubs growing out of the rocks. And then, like the final touch here. This is the last little thing I'm going to do. I'm just going to plant a, plant a little flower here. A little bunch of flowers right there. Boop. Perfect. Gives it a little splash of color. All right, let's take a look. Let me spin it for you. Thanks for watching guys, I really appreciate it. Make sure you subscribe, catch the next video when it comes out. satisfying.